G'day guys, Steve Morgan here for Australian Bass Tournaments with Mark Crompton down here in Middle Harbour in Sydney and I found something about Cromo today that I didn't really know before and that's that he doesn't fish Middle Harbour very much and Middle Harbour's a fantastic brim ground. Um, so we've got you here today, mate. you're the current Oz Open champion, you haven't done much time in Middle Harbour, I'm sort of shocked with that. Yeah, my uh, my experience up here is sort of only first one or two bends and then I've always sort of gotten out of there. Never done much much good up here so I've never really given it the time. Um, I'm pretty firm on just cutting down small areas and doing them intimately. So I, most of my fishing has been upriver. Yep, there we go. So we've got a project today, and that is, it's the medium size, the 65 mil Cranker Crabs. Now, I fished a lot of tournaments on Cranker Crabs, and Cromo has as well. Like We've got a lot of tournaments between us on Cranker Crabs, but I haven't got the confidence to fish that next size up. And I think a lot of anglers out there are the same. They fish the little one, they've caught heaps of fish on it. This big one looks intimidating, but you're telling me today that this thing catches fish and catches just as many Look, fish. I, I've been using that now for um, pretty solid for about three months. Um, more or less, that's the only sort of style size crab that I've been throwing. Um, I, I tend to find like the size of it, it, it does on the cast spook fish sometimes, but those bigger fish, I don't think, when you, when you learn how to cast correctly and you get it into the right spot, pull it back to them, um, that the bigger fish definitely tend to prefer it. Now, from my point of view, these have got bigger hooks. They have number 12s in the, instead of the number 14 decoys. That's a real advantage for me because those little hooks sometimes, they pull out, don't they? They definitely do. I had problems uh, going too heavy with the rods with the smaller crabs. I don't have to worry about that with these ones. Um, so I can go a heavier rod, heavier line, heavier everything, and I do strike them. <laughs> now, that, and that's the thing we want to do today. So the, the idea today is we're on Middle Harbour, which Cromo doesn't know. We're going to be fishing big crabs that I don't know, and he's going to teach me on some of the home turf how to fish these uh, how to fish these medium sized crabs so so give us the tips if you're a beginner and you want to move into the the bigger crabs tell us what tackle and what techniques you need. like just run through the the bigger crabs 101 for us okay so i generally run like a five pound straight through um, with the bigger crab uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility on the strike but at the same time pulling power if you hook those bigger fish you can just point the rod straight down lock your drag hold the drag and back out they are not going to snap it unless they hit something um, a two to four kilo rod 2500 reel the, the sole three I, I, I tend to find the drag on that is perfect and you can lock that down to some pretty extreme drag so um, that's my choice of combo uh, with casting them like I said I tend to try and hide the drop so I'm trying to cast past fish and then skip it back along. These things do really, they skip, you can skip cast them and you can skip retrieve them. So you can bring it back to an area where you think the fish are. So cast a long way past them and then hide, because they do clunk a bit when yep. they hit the yep. water. Yep. Um, so you can kind of hide that by bringing it back and then letting them just drift nice and slow. And I think in clear water like we have up in Middle Harbour, that's a real advantage fishing that straight through fluorocarbon because you don't get that line shadow on yep. the fish. So if you're throwing over a fish yep. and you're using braid, that can be a disadvantage. Yep. So I think we've got the ideal arena to test this in today. Let's start up on the uh, the bridge here near the Roseville boat ramp. Give it a go. See if we can catch some fish on the medium sized crank of crabs. So normally I'll pull up a bit shy of the bridge, have a couple of long casts at it to try and see if there's any any of the good fish that are, you know, potentially going to spook a little bit more there. I always a firm believer of the big fish feed first, so I'll try and see if I can hang back, get one in from a long shot, and then if I have nothing then, then I'll move in a bit closer and try and work out whether the fish are taking bait that's coming with the current or taking bait that's going against the current. And I'll sort of get a cast into it as, as far down as I can and then I'll just slowly sort of drag it along the bottom along the along the pilots. There's one now. She's not a bad fish. And how was that bite on that big crab? Different from the small crab? Yeah, he just sort of already had it in its mouth that time to be brutally honest I didn't feel a bite at all I've just lifted up and he was there but that's normal for crabs isn't that it? is so look it is they don't they don't tend to mess around with the bigger crab either though it's no I, I don't find that the bigger fish give it that duh, 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 it's just on yeah because the little ones leave it alone they just sort of leave it for the big ones yeah that's a good fish too that's a that's not a bad know, fish. high 20s and again you're, you're sort of not upgrading fish that size in your bag there 
they're a uh, they're slightly bigger than the school size fish that you normally get. So, so a fish like that, that'd be probably nearly 30 to the fork, wouldn't it? Yeah. And it's yep. got that crab. Let's have a look right here. See how it's got one hook on the top, one on the bottom. That's he's not tasting it. He's eating it. No, you know? that's right. So. So there you go, Cromo. It's uh, and we found that today, haven't we? There's not many bites, but they're quality bites. They are. Yep. Yep. And that's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you want. That's why I'm throwing the 65 so much now. Um, you know, like I say, I'm I'm, st I'm still throwing the 50 as well, but that 65 is when I'm going. I need quality now. I need to make sure that my bag's solid. That's where the quality fish are going to come from. There's just no two ways about it. And it only took us uh, two casts on that bridge, and uh, away we were. Yeah, there'll be more here too. So it's turned into a pretty uh, pretty windy old day here, Cromo, but we've sound, found some structure. It's a dropping tide, still got clear water. What's the secret to uh, to fishing the structure with these bigger cranker crabs? Well, I don't really think there's too much of a secret to it. It's chuck it in there as much as you can and like, just pay attention to it. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll try and... There's one. There's one. Oh, no. No. No, that's no, not one. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm just sort of trying to get it in as uh, I think it's a bit shallow in there to get it into the shadows but um, just trying to get it in there and keep it in there stay, keep it in there for as long as you can don't I think. be in a rush to get it out no, of the strike zone I, no exactly right exactly right I think um, aim with casting is definitely one of the bigger factors with it but I think that goes along with any lure doesn't it like when you can really get your your aims and your shots in nice and nice and close and tight and accurate Yes, yes, on. Yes. There you go. <laughs> oh. And you get the big bites on those. That was the you, big one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fish. I've tried to get him down low. Nah. And he's touched something, hasn't he? Forget about it. Yeah. That was a <laughs> So the moral of the story so far is not as many bites. Yeah, not as but many the fish bites, are good. but dollar dollar fish, yeah. <laughs> go put another one on. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh no. Nah. <laughs> I've got nothing there. <laughs> I got nothing. He's around the pole. Cram in those places. That's where it goes. He's around the pole. Come on, nice and gentle. You got a net there? Nah, no, we'll just pole no net. We'll be right. I'm around the pole. <laughs> Forget about it. That's right. We'll get him. Let's get him out first. He's alright. He's out. No, he's not. He's, not he's around, around the pole. Around that pole. I'm just gonna hold onto the thing for us. He'll come out. All right. Hit that leaky. There he is. How are you going with that, that net there? Perfect. There you go, that's the sort of fish you expect on these big crabs, isn't it? Yes. There we go, beautiful. Oy. That's a lovely fish. It's definitely not a, uh, <laughs> definitely not a small fish lure, Grab is Grab that and uh, we'll show the camera the, I think I'll take it out. <clears throat> So there you go, that's the, that's the sort of fish that Mark was talking about uh, when it comes to fishing these medium-sized cranker crabs. It's definitely not a school fish, that fish is probably 34, 35 centimetres to the fork of the tail. Great hookup, that number 12 treble, right in the, uh, right in the thick of the blue lip. And uh, that's what you want. We fished for what, an hour along here? Yeah, look. Two bites, one wipeout, one good fish. Yeah. That's, that beats five little fish any day. Mate, at the end of the day, you know, even if I've got four fish in the boat, then I go on a 65. Because I know if I'm going to get that extra one, it's going to be a good one that's going to help that bag as well. So, you know, from there on out the rest of the day, I'm on 65s flat out because they're just producing much better fish. Well, there you go. Um, if you haven't seen a reason yet to throw one of the medium sized cranker crabs, there's one right there. Cromo, thanks very much for taking us through your techniques uh, for fishing these big baits. Hopefully it can help your fishing next time you're out on the water.